in the third, fourth, and fifth grades made a hundred or 525 origami animals to display at the library. Each grade made the same number of animals. How many animals did each grade make? So, we've given you the division problem here, but I want you to think about it. What grades made origami animals? Third, third, fourth, and fifth. It tells us here in the story of the story problem. So third, fourth, and fifth, we count that as three grades. So we're going to divide the number of origami animals, which is how much? 525. 525 origami animals divided by the three classes. Okay? So, first looking at the hundreds. Can we share five hundreds among the three classes? No. no. Yes, we can do one, right? Not evenly, but we can. If I had five hundred blocks like this, can, can I share some of those at least? Yes, each group, each class will have what? How many hundreds? 100. 100. And they've done that right here. Okay? So, um, that, I don't know why that's weird that they said the first digit. And the, oh, I see what they're doing. Okay, so it's asking can 500s be shared among three groups without regrouping? Did I have to regroup to be able to share at least 100 with each group? No, I could put 100 in each group without having to re without having to move on. It's kind of a weird way that they've worded it, but it's basically asking, can three go into five? Yes. Yes. Three can, can three go into five? Yes. If I have five, can I get three from there? Yes. Yes, I can. So the first digit of my quotient, the quotient is the what? First of all, what's the quotient mean? The answer. the answer of the division problem, right? So the first digit of the quotient will be in what place? Hundreds. Hundreds. The hundreds place. And the reason I know that, ooh, that was pretty. Um, <laughs> the reason I know that is because when I look at the division problem and I see 500 and I see the 3, I know that I can get at least 100 in each group. I know that when I'm dividing those 100 blocks, I can get 100 in each group. Okay? So this question is important because on your test it does have these questions. So those of you that are talking at table 3, um, it's important to know. When it's asking you the question, the first digit of the quotient will be in the hundreds place. Those exact words are used. Okay? So the first the first quote digit of the quotient, the first digit of the answer will be in the hundreds place. That says. So now we're gonna divide. Share how many hundreds equally among the groups? So how many how many hundreds do we have? Yeah. One. We have 100 that we're going to share equally among the how many groups? Three. Three. Three groups. So now we're going to multiply three times one. Oops, times. That's the times is there. Three times one equals three. three. And now we're going to subtract. We're going to subtract five minus three. And what do we get? Two. 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 Now it says... Check that two hundreds cannot be shared among the three without regrouping. So what it's saying, and I noticed that last week when I was working with you guys on, um, on 4-10, that sometimes you did this, and then this number wasn't right. If this number was 4, if I came out my answer down here was 4, I want to check and make sure that this number is not bigger than this. Because if this is bigger than this, then I didn't do, I'm over here, you guys. If I didn't do, now you made me lose my train of thought. If this number is bigger than this number, then I didn't do the first part right. If I had four down here, 
That's four hundreds. Can I divide four hundreds into three groups? Yes. Yes, I could. So I would have to say, oh, wait a minute. This number's bigger than this number. I, can't, I didn't do the last step right, so I have to go back and do it again. Okay? Yes, Brian. When you have that, isn't it, you have four minus whatever number. Isn't it always going to be under the four? This number, when you do the subtraction, this number should always be less than this number. If it's not, then you did the last step wrong and you have to go back and do it again. And that's why it's telling you to check that the 200s that are left when we do the subtraction is not more than, than the groups that you're splitting it into. That makes it confusing. You have to go back and redo the step before. We've done the hundreds. Now we're going to divide the tens. So we have the two that we've done when we did the subtraction here. We're going to bring down the two, and now we have how many tens? Two. Not two, because we had to regroup those hundreds. I'm going to remind you what we did with our base ten blocks. Remember when we had the two in this place? This is in the hundreds place, because if we look here, this is the hundreds place. Okay? We have to regroup those hundreds into tens so that we can divide them up. Remember, we have to divide them in we have to regroup them into 10 sticks so we can divide them up. So we now have 22 tens. If you think in terms of base 10 blocks, you're thinking in terms of 22 green sticks. Yeah? One. So if I have 22 green sticks, how many times is three going to go into that? I want you to think first and then raise your hand when you know. Okay, how many times is three going to 22? Seven. 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 It tells you right there, doesn't it? Okay, so seven goes into 22, does it go in evenly? No. 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 So I'm going to remind myself, 7 times 3 was actually how much? 21. 21. It's actually 21. It's not 22. Be careful. Don't put the 22 just assuming. So now I'm going to subtract. 22 minus 21 is 1. one. Is this number bigger than this number? No. No. So I did my, I did my last step correctly. Okay. So we were going to share 22 among three groups. And then when I figured out that, that, that it went seven times, we multiplied seven times three to get the 21. And then we subtracted 22 minus 21. And then by checking, they mean check that 110 cannot be shared among how many groups? Three. Three. There you go. Okay. So I had one ten left. I cannot share it. So I have to regroup it to ones. And I have to bring down the other ones. So now I have a total of 15 ones. Can I share 15? into three groups. Yes. How many times does 15 get shared into three groups? Or 15 divided by three? Oh, Owen. Five. Five times. Okay. Now I'm going to check. Five times three equals 15, which I already put down there, so I'm going to do that. 15. Subtract 15 minus 15. And I get zero. Check. Zero or left. I have none left. There's no dividing left. I'm good. I'm golden. We're done. Right? There are 8,523 sheets of origami paper to be divided equally among eight schools. How many sheets of origami paper will each school get? So example two here is to divide this 8,523 divided by eight, representing the eight schools. Okay? So we've done it in this little grid paper here to make it kind of go easier. It says, look at the thousands in 8,523. What is the thousands digit in there? Eight. Eight. Can eight go into 8,000? If I have 8,000 blocks, can I divide those into eight groups? 
Yes. How many are going to go in each group? One. One. Now, if I do that one times eight, I actually get how much? Eight. Eight. So it's going to go evenly, isn't it? There's no leftovers for regrouping. Okay. Then I'm going to bring down my five, which represents what place value? Hundreds. Hundreds. Can I divide those five into eight groups? No. No, I can't. So do I do anything? Who wants to explain to me what I need to do now? Um, Angelie. I have to put a zero in the hundreds place because I'm going to put no hundreds blocks in any of these groups. The pencils are down. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring down my next digit, which is what place value? Ten. It's the tens. Now I have 52 tens. I regrouped those 500s into 10 sticks, and I brought my other two that I have. Now I have 52 tens. Can eight go? Can I divide those into eight groups? Yes. yes. How? Think in your head for a minute. How many are going to go in each group? Raise your hand when you know. 52 divided by 8. Raise your hand when you know. Okay, how many times? Six. Six. Does 6 times 8 equal 52? No. No. So what does 6 times 8 equal? 48. 48. So now I'm going to subtract. 52 minus 48 is 4. And I'm going to do now bring down the 3. With these 40... These four tens, I'm going to regroup them into what? They're tens, and I can't split them evenly, in, so I'm going to regroup them into ones. ones, and I bring down my other three ones. Now I have 43 ones. Think about how many times 8 goes into 43. How many are going to go in each group? Raise your hand when you know. Okay, what is 43, what is 43 divided by 8? Five. 5. So 5 times 8 was? 40. 40. And I'm going to subtract, and I end up with? 3. 3, which is my? Remainder. Remainder. Okay. So the question was, let's go back over here. The first digit in the quotient will be in the thousands place. Right? Because it did work, I could do 8 divided by 8, so that would be my first, my first digit would be in the thousands place. And when we divided it all out, each school will get how many sheets of origami paper? Raise your hand if you can tell me how many sheets each school will get. Okay, go ahead and turn to your elbow partner and tell them. Okay. So, no. so, what I heard, what I heard was 1,065. It says there will be blank sheets left. It's kind of like left over. How many sheets will be left over, class? Three. All right, go ahead and copy it. There's a whole lot of vocabulary words that you guys are not comfortable with, but that's okay. So, the thing is, is that you'll get comfortable with them. We'll just keep using them. This is showing you how to check your work when you do a division problem. And this might be asked of you, so you need to make sure you understand how to do it. So eyes are on me, pencils are down. Can we have our chairs down too? Thank you. All right. So the quotient is the answer, correct, to the division problem. Um, well, part of the answer, because the answer usually includes the remainder. But the quotient is part of the answer. The remainder is what was left over. The divisor is the number you're, basically how many groups you're putting it into. And the dividend is your number that you're dividing into. Okay? The way to check it, it wrote it out for you here, but again, using words that you're like, huh? 
Multiply the quotient by the divisor. If there's a remainder, add it to the product. The result should equal the dividend. So let's talk about what that means. If this was my answer, I should be able to multiply this number times this number and get this number. Okay? And that's what they did here. They multiplied the 1,065 times the 8 and got 8,520. I'm looking at my dividend here and I'm looking at my product here. Do they equal each other? No. No, they don't equal each other. What did I forget to do? Add the 3. I have to take whatever the remainder was and then add that at the end. So I should be adding those three additional, and then do my numbers match? Yes. yes. So I know that I did the problem right. So when you're multiplying, when you're checking, again, you're going to multiply the quotient by the divisor, and you should get the dividend. However, if there was a remainder, you have to add that back in first. Okay, we're going to do example. Okay. By the way, whoever's playing with colored pencils or pencils needs to stop and pay attention. Okay. Ollie used 852 beads to make four bracelets. He put the same number of beads on each bracelet. How many beads does how many beads does each bracelet have? And then we're going to check our work. So we've already started, apparently. 8 divided by 4 is 2, so 2 times 4 equals 8, eight. and I'm going to subtract those. I'm going to bring down my 5. How many times does 4 go into 5? Four. 1 time. 1 times 4 is 4, so I'm going to subtract, and I end up with 1. I'm going to bring down my 2, and I have 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3. three. 3 times 4 is 12. And I subtract and I get 0. Okay, now do I have a remainder to worry about adding back in anywhere? No. No, so I'm not going to worry about it. Alright, so what I'm going to do to check my work is I'm going to take the 213 and I'm going to multiply it by what number? 4. 4. Okay. 4 times 3 is 12, regroup, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, 4 times 2 is 8. Is my product here equal to my quotient here? Yes. Did I get my answer right? Yes. So my quotient was 213 and it was correct. If this number had had a remainder at all, I would then add that in here. Okay. That's where the adding the remainder would go, and then whatever my final answer was should match my quotient. But this problem doesn't have a Okay. On, uh, so each had 213. Can I split 300s into two groups? Yes. 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 So my first digit of my quotient is going to be in what place? Hundreds. The hundreds place. Two can go into three hundred. One time. So one times two is two, and then I subtract, I end up with a one. I, I want everybody watching. I bring down the nine. Now I have 19. I want everybody watching. Now I bring down the nine. I have 19 divided by two is nine. Nine times two is 18. 18. I subtract, I bring down the four. I have 14. 14 divided by 2 is? 7. 7, seven. seven times 2 is? 14. 14. I subtract and I end up with 0. Now I'm going to check it. What numbers am I going to multiply to check? What's going to be my top number? 197 times 2. 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 9 is 18 plus the 1 is 19. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. Does my product match my yes. dividend here? Yes. So did I get the answer right? Yes. So what was my quotient on that one? 197. 197.